So this case is a case of a revision total hip replacement. This was an 80-year-old female. She had, a, had an Austin Mood replacement which was done 10 years ago. And now she has come with a history of fresh trauma. So she went to one surgeon, an x-ray was done. It showed an undisplaced fracture. So it was decided to treat this conservatively. But it displaced in two weeks, the fracture displaced and the surgeon decided now to operate. Uh, he converted this to a cemented bipolar with a wiring of the greater trochanter. Uh, the patient postoperatively was not happy with the surgery in the sense that she always claimed that the limb was too tight and painful. And it dislocated in two weeks. An attempt at, open redu at close reduction was not successful. So open reduction was done and this was this reduction was protected in a long knee brace as you can see in the x-ray on, on the right. As long as it was kept like that, it remained stable. But as soon as uh, an attempt was made to mobilize her by removing the brace, she dislocated. Okay. So now this is the current situation. It's dislocated, there is uh, no infection and the nerve is intact. All right. So who wants to tackle it? Okay. Primarily, we have to differentiate whether it is uh, because of uh, the abductor insufficiency or because of the version of the stem. Which of these is a problem has to be dictated first. Okay, so did you get a CT scan at all to evaluate the stem or? Uh, no, no other investigations were done. Okay. A, pel a pelvis x-ray, both sides. Uh, yeah, I mean, nothing. I don't so have it now. Here. You're going to take her to the operating room, you're going to put a cup in, you're going to look at the stem, assess it. Is that your plan? Yeah, so uh, the idea was that uh, uh, the problem is twofold here. My thought process was that at the, on the socket side, we have a multiple dislocations with probably compromised the capsular envelope. So we need to provide stability at the socket side by probably by doing a dual mobility. But there is a greater problem on the femoral side. I mean, if you, if you, are, uh, if you can see, the prosthesis appears to be quite proximal. And we, we have to sink it in. The, the, it dislocated probably because it was too tight, it was lengthened. Uh, there was no record in the papers uh, uh, whether it was long or not. The patient came to me uh, at uh, this point. So if I were to remo revise this stem with a removal of the stem, removal of that cement mantle, it would mean an ETO and it would necessitate the use of a long Wagner type of stem and she is an 80 year old frail lady with multiple uh, medical issues. So I decided to use a simpler alternative and I decided to do a cement in cement revision keeping the original cement mantle intact. Uh, also the greater trochanteric wiring was fine so I did not touch it. Any comments from the panel on this one? Yeah, I think it's the right idea. The uh, cement mantle was, was robust to begin with, so cement, cement, cement inside cement is uh, probably the right way to go. And, you know, my only concern would be, I, I probably would have gone right to a constraint liner um, at 80 years old, uh, not do a dual mobility. Um, that was the first thought, but then, I mean, dual mobility, again, was a simpler option available here. So this is a one-year follow-up. The, you can see the greater trochanter fracture has completely united. She was completely happy with this, walked around with for one year. She, in fact, she came to us for the fracture on the opposite side and we have matched the x-ray, done the same thing on the opposite side as well. All right. What, what was the version of the original stem that yeah, you... Yes, I, sorry to, uh, I forgot to mention that. In addition to sinking the stem in, I also gave additional anti-version because I felt that it was almost neutral. I gave about 7 to 10 degrees additional antiversion. That, that, that is the fundamental problem, I would think, yeah. yeah. No, and that's, and that's the way you do it. You downside the stem. Uh, did you make it a vent hole in the cement mantle? Yes, uh, with multiple drill holes from the top. I mean, I could not have, I didn't have access to a long 8 millimeter drill as is recommended to score the inside of the cement mantle. Well, you, you, don't have, you don't have to score the inside of the cement mantle because the cement will bond to cement. But you should make a vent hole about two-thirds of the way down to allow some of the air and cement to come out as you're uh, cementing inside it. Otherwise, you'll get, as you'll see, a little air pocket set on the bottom. If you want to get that air out 
and fill that up with cement, you put a little vent hole. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's been uh, described how to do cement and cement technique. Okay, yeah. All right, any, uh, any other comments? Okay, I think we have one more presenter, right? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very Good much. Job.